Time Blocking Method. Today I'm going to be sharing with you five Bible secrets that reveal Christ-like productivity methods. Have you ever wondered how Christ was able to accomplish so much in the short three and a half years of his ministry while he was here? Christ has influenced more people in his words than any other writer in history. Why does the Bible continue to be a number one best-selling book and it has given in such practical instructions to people all throughout the ages and around the world on ways that they could be more productive in their life work and in the efforts that they put their hands to. If you want to understand how to get more done in less time, today I'm going to be sharing with you just five of the many biblical principles that show you how you can maximize your time while you are here on earth. But first, my name is Enoch Leffingwell, and here at the Army of Youth, we are passionate about helping young people to identify their unique talents and to dedicate them to the Lord's service. If this is something that interests you, I encourage you to like or follow us, subscribe for more messages like these, because we love helping young people to understand direction from God and find their life calling. And if this is something you've been searching for, then this may be an answer to your prayers in the Army of Youth videos. So subscribe for more messages like this. So today we're going to be looking at these five methods, that these five secrets that you could use to manage your time. Now, the first thing that we're going to be looking at is in Habakkuk chapter 2 in verse uh, 2 through 3. The Bible reveals that, uh, first of all, in uh, the book of Proverbs, it says that without a vision, the people perish. It is so essential that we have a vision for our life. What is your vision for your life, for your health? What is God's vision for your, your life while you're here on earth? And when you understand God's vision for your life, what we are encouraged to do in Habakkuk 2, verse 2 and 3, is to write the vision and make it plain upon tables that he may run that readeth it. And it continues, for the vision is yet for an appointed time. It is not enough to have a vision. If you have an idea of the, the direction that God is leading you, and you just leave it in your mind, it's not really a, a goal. It's really just a dream. But when you start writing it down, then things start to, to happen. But when you give it an appointed time, now it becomes something that, that God can work with. Have an appointed time for the effort and the work that we do. This is what we see, what I like to call giving it artificial deadlines for the activities that you do. There is a, a law called Parkinson's Law that they've found that work expands according to the time that you allot it. Think about it. Have you ever had a project that needed to be done within a month? How long did it take you? Chances are you got it done pretty quickly, I mean, pretty much in a month. But it's amazing how much we can accomplish in a minute when we l wait until the last minute to do it. It is like so amazing that time truly expands according to the time that we allot it. There was a student of ours who had understood this principle about setting artificial deadlines or what is commonly known as time blocking, where you block out a specific amount of time to accomplish a specific um, activity or task or, or a project. And when you block that out in your calendar, you give it an appointed time and you focus and you do that one thing. Ecclesiastes 3.1 says, To everything there is a season and a time for every purpose under the heavens. So when you give time to everything that you're doing and you allot yourself a certain amount, you, have, you will find you can get way more done. Have you ever wondered why some people can accomplish in five hours what takes others ten hours to do? Some people are able to just fit so much and you're like, what are they doing differently? Well, many of them, some of the most high achieving, the most highly productive individuals throughout history, throughout the, the ministries over the years, they have followed this, this secret method called time blocking that allows you to just block out if this is a 30 minute task or an hour task or or um, 40 an hour conversation and you block it out and you make it basically you're making an appointment with yourself on your calendar and it makes such a world of difference. I like to use um, a 
um, I like to use this tool for getting more done and being able to stay focused during that time. So that is a the time blocking. Now, the second secret that the Word of God reveals is found in Luke chapter 23 and verse 54. The Bible talks about how the women were preparing the, the body of Christ and, and they, they left on preparation day as the Sabbath drew nigh. So the day that Jesus died was preparation day. The Bible actually has the days of the weeks. There's only two of those days that were given a name. And otherwise, it's just the first day of the week, the second day of the week, the third day of the week. And it goes all the way until the sixth and the seventh. And the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. And the fourth commandment, which is Saturday, not Sunday. And in the, the Sabbath day, what does the word Sabbath mean? The Sabbath means rest. And that is a whole day that is set apart to rest. And what I would suggest to us is the Bible is revealing this principle of having themed days that where you're able to have a theme, a topic, or a, um, a type of activity that you do for that theme. The Word of God shows us with the Sabbath, the whole theme of the Sabbath is to rest, to rest from our labors. In fact, Ezekiel uh, 46 verse 1, it talks about how God has given us six working days. Six days shall we do all our, all our labors, but the seventh day is a day of the Lord where we are to rest and spend that quality time. Can you imagine? Imagine your creator who formed you out of the dust of the earth, breathed into your nostrils the breath of life, who loves you and wants a personal relationship with you. He has set aside a day, 24 hours every week, to be with you, quality time that you can spend with Jesus, and he's inviting you to rest. Now, this is a productivity uh, video, so you were like, wait a second, I came here to do more and work more, but actually being able to rest and have to observe the biblical Sabbath of the fourth commandment allows us to be more productive during the days. There's been so many examples of businesses that have shut down on Sabbath who was more productive and had more sales than many in their economy or previously before. So, uh, But the principle I want us to see here is when you have a theme for a day, that is a day of rest. Preparation day is what the Bible calls a day just before Sabbath. Why is it preparation? Because they're preparing to labor to enter into that rest, as Hebrews 4 says. Preparation is a day where in Exodus 16, it talked about how they boil everything that you're going to boil, prepare extra food so that on Sabbath, you don't have to work and do extra things. Or on preparation day, there's a lot more maybe house cleaning, or if you have a lot of vacuuming or you have a lot of household chores to do, you may want to consider to, to, uh, to put that all together under one day, um, such as preparation day where there's maybe some deeper cleaning that you're like, I don't want to do it every day, and I don't want to do it haphazardly. You can do it systematically. You can give it a season and a time for every purpose. And preparation day could be your day of extra chores or a household duty so you could prepare to fully rest and be refreshed, to go back to work and be more productive than ever you ever thought possible. So in like manner, as those two have days, you might want to consider having a batch day for some of the activities you do. Like here at the Army of Youth, we have these online group Bible studies where we come together for people all over the world and we study some of these principles in God's Word, how to find direction from Him, how to live our calling. And each week we're coming together and every Tuesday is our day for what we call these squads ministries. Because we're in the Army of Youth, we're mobilized in squads for service. So every Tuesday, all of our ministry workers from around the world internationally, we come together and this is when we talk together on squads, we work together online or we get projects done or reach out to people. No matter what day it is uh, that we have our squads throughout the week, and we this day is a themed for just squads. And then on Thursday is the day where we focus on our monthly group coaching that I go live every month teaching principles like this and where we put the best efforts that we can, the very best frameworks to help you to live your calling, to find direction from God. And in this program, every Thursday, we really focus on making this better and better and putting together the messages. And it helps us to be systematic during the month. So we're always ready to give our very best and to show up fully 
for our students who come from around the world to join our online school. So that is our theme for that day. You might find that depending on the vision that God has given you or the calling that he has placed upon your heart, you might want to connect these, uh, have a theme uh, day of the week to be able to really cluster together these different groups of activities. And this is what we call batching. Batching is um, just like when you're going to make some cupcakes. If you're going to make cupcakes, do you just put one cupcake in the oven at a time and let it bake and then pull it out and put another one? No way! You create a, what's called a batch of cupcakes and it makes it so much easier to prepare. In like manner, we are able to, to cluster all of our activities together on one day so, or, or in one area. We, we try to put all of these similar tasks together so that we're able to stay really focused and do deep work so that our day doesn't just have a whole like squad ministry over here. We got some the monthly group coaching over here. We've got all these different activities um, all, all, and, and all these household chores here. We're just having some scheduled days that the theme is all batching them. It makes so much a difference to be more productive. In fact, Ephesians chapter 5 verse 16 says that we are admonished to redeem the time because the days are evil. And what better way to redeem the time than to work in ways that are allowing us to be more productive. We've got this issue in society where many of us pride ourselves with being great multitaskers. And I myself used to be one of those. It's like, oh, I multitask all the time. But then I began to study the research and understand studies and realize, wait a second, multitasking is actually a myth. We can't multitask. Really what we're doing is we're doing task switching. When we're constantly switching from task to task to task, there is a book uh, uh, that was uh, by Cal Newport and he mentioned about how there is like the, our attention residue is left on the previous task that we were working on every time that we switch. And every time we switch to a new task, we have to reorientate our, ourselves to the laws that are uh, and the context working to that specific task. Whether we're like checking messages on social media and then we start writing on something here and then we're like, oh yeah, let me go organize these books over here in my office. And, and then uh, who was I talking to again? Oh, there's, and then every time we switch, we're actually destroying our productivity. We're not able to focus and to be present. That's one thing that we found with Christ is that while he was present, he, we need to give ourselves permission to be present wherever we are. This task switching uh, kills our focus. And if we just stop that and we find all of those activities that are similar together, we group them as much as we can in these, these themed days, it can make a tremendous difference for redeeming the time. And again, what, I, what we like to do is our theme days are always connected with our long-term vision. If there's something that, we need, that we're working towards long-term, we see like what day can I associate that I could attach to this. For you, time management might be something that's new. Maybe trying to put together a schedule or a morning routine or there's something that you are trying to do every Sunday. Here at the Army of Youth, we have Sunday set aside in the morning for a couple hours to plan the day and plan the week, to create a, an intentional week, to see what are we going to do? What is our intentions for that week? And as we create this ideal uh, situation of how we want to use our time, it makes all the difference. Sunday is our theme for planning. And you might want to have a theme where you can set the intentions for the week. And we have uh, the Live Your Calling and we go through this and we have our weekly pages and we review the prior week and we go forward uh, looking forward in the in the future week and we see what lessons have we learned and what are we going to uh, to analyze and uh, revise and remobilize during the week and it makes a huge difference to be able to go through our account book each week so having theme days so that you can batch your work will help you to be way more productive you're not leaving the residue of your attention which is so essential for getting stuff done another way for us to be able to guard our focus, to be more productive and, and be present where we are, is to create what I like to call, uh, what you want to do is build what a bunker. 
when you're able to build a bunker, this is like, in, we are in this army, we're in a war, and this war is over your time. When you look at this, this great conflict between Christ and Satan, they're all after your time. See, I've heard it once said, it might have been Albert Einstein that said, time is the stuff that life is made out of. How you spend your time is how you spend your life. For us to dedicate our lives to Christ's service means to dedicate our time to Christ's service, to dedicate our talent to Christ's service. And, and time is one of the six universal talents that everybody has received, and God desires us to increase. So we have to guard our time as we would guard our life. Guard your time as though your life depends on it, because it does. So when you build a bunker, it allows you to, it's kind of a space where you can go kind of settle in, and you can do some deep work, and you can do some of your most important work. And I recommend doing it in the morning, because your brain is most fresh, and you're not overwhelmed, or you're not taxed, or competing with so many other priorities. When you do that, the, the most important work in the morning, uh, and, and you have that bunker space, that, that you've communicated with your family, you've communicated with those in the office or whoever you're working with that, you know, this is the work that I need to focus. So during these hours, then I need no distractions. And during these hours, like I'm, I'm totally available and I could, I could speak, but I need to guard against interruptions. And that's what the bunker helps with. And as you train your family to understand that, this, they, many at times they're willing to give you maybe an hour or two or however long you need, and it can make a tremendous difference. Jesus said in Matthew 6, 6, he spoke about uh, praying in our closets and how when uh, what we do in private, God rewards us openly. And it's like this closet concept where this secret, this bunker where you're able to just come together and come apart and focus. So in like manner, it's what you practice in private that you are rewarded for in public. Now, I'll say that again. What you practice in private is what you're rewarded for in public. And when you build a bunker, this is where you can get some of your most productive work done that is essential for you fulfilling your life work. And this is um, something that helps us to be able to really stay focused, turn off social media, and have and have these regular times for checking our inbox uh, so that that's not distracting us. And do that one thing. As Philippians 3.13 says, this one thing I do, forgetting those things that are behind, forgetting all distractions, forgetting all things that might interrupt, and this one thing I do, focus on that one thing for however much time you've blocked out for that. That's uh, what, what you want to do. So that is the fourth secret. Now, the fifth secret for Christ-like productivity methods is uh, to recognize that uh, Christ has given wisdom to, um, in 1 Corinthians, it talks about how Christ is the power of God and the wisdom of God. But who is wisdom? Uh, a fee, uh, Proverbs chapter 8 and verse 12 shows that wisdom, who is Christ? What has God's wisdom um, provided? And Proverbs 8, 12, it says, I, wisdom, dwell with prudence and find out the knowledge of witty inventions. It's like, wait a second. God has, has it's Christ's wisdom that, in, that has provided many of these witty inventions. So what is one of the witty inventions that Christ has provided us so that we could be more productive with our time? And that is an e-calendar. Having an electronic calendar is so powerful if you use it. Many of us have these calendars on our phones, but we how many of us are actually maximizing using this tool to help us and to live our calling, to be more productive, to be more consecrated, and, and to give back to God what He has given us. Christ gave His life for you. He sacrificed everything for you. What are you willing to give for Him? Are you willing to give your time for Him? Are you willing to put in the effort for you to manage your time? The electronic calendar is one of the best tools that I have found for implementing this time blocking method where you're able to take a moment and to think through your intentional week. This is what we like to call your intentional week. That if you could just have complete control over your week, 
what would you put in there? What would you do? And it doesn't mean that's going to happen every time, but what, what would you ideally do? And you can schedule in all of your priorities first, like having devotions, having regular times for eating and for, for worship and for prayer and for working and for rising and sleeping, having these regular times. And, and when are you going to fit in the different facets of your life work that is essential for you to live your calling and to be all that you can for Christ? Having your intentional week is one of these tools that we've used that allows you to be able to prioritize your day and your time. Now, you, you may not want to use this uh, overlaying your, your regular calendar, but on an electronic calendar, you can have two. I recommend you might want to have an intentional week where you put that in there and then have your actual week of what's scheduled and what actually takes place. That way you can turn it off and on so it's not always cluttering up your space so it doesn't overwhelm you. But having an intentional week by using your e-calendar, it can make all of the difference as you're using, you're setting artificial deadlines and you're blocking out that time. And then you have the, the themed days. And number the secret three is to have um, batching times for your work during these themed days, batching groups of, of things, the projects and activities so that you could stay focused and redeem the time. And number four is to build a bunker whereby you can eliminate distractions and stay very focused on what matters most. And number five is to use an e-calendar to create your intentional week. When you apply these five biblical principles to your life, you will find that you will have more time. You have, when every moment is rightly employed and rightly valued, you have all the time necessary for the world, for the cause of God, for the marketplace, for yourself and for others. There is no lack with God. It's a matter of not how much time has been given us, but what are you doing with that which you have? What are you doing with that which you can influence? Friends, if you want to really maximize your time and be faithful with this precious gift that God has given us, then I encourage you to get a copy of our Live Your Calling Daily Account book, because in this book, we have put together each of these principles so that you're able to apply them and have a system of Bible-based principles that allows you to apply these principles of Bible success to your life so that you can live your calling. You can understand that direction from the Lord and you could be actually doing it. There's no greater joy than knowing what God has called you to do and to know that you're actually living your calling. So we put together the Live Your Calling Daily Account book so that every day you can have these themes so that you can understand how to time block. And there's some tools and resources that will help you to get started on this journey of redeeming the time because the days are evil and there is so much that God is seeking to do for you. But we limit God based on how little we value our time. But if we really understood that your life, your time has been purchased by the infinite blood of Calvary, then your time is invaluable. It is beyond computation. And the time squandered is a squandering of Christ's own blood. We want to redeem the time as Christ has redeemed us. By creation and redemption, we belong to Him. So friends, if this is your desire, I encourage you to um, pick up your copy to the Live Your Calling Daily Account book. All you have to do is go to the website, thearmyofyouth.com forward slash account book and you can get your copy today that's again the army of youth.com forward slash account book and you can order your copy today and if this video was a blessing to you i encourage you to subscribe to follow us for more messages and share this who do you know that would like to understand christ-like productivity who do you know that would like to live their calling and find clear direction from the lord share this video let them know and remember, friends, when it all seems new and it seems kind of scary what the Lord is calling you to do, just remember that God doesn't call the qualified. He qualifies the called.